lots of dissolved gases, carbon dioxide, water, sulfur, also chlorine and fluorine, and you combine all those with water, they make acid, okay? So that's what our early atmosphere was made out of. Uh, we see a lot of this where we have the asthenosphere rising uh, in ocean ridges and divergent lake boundaries, as I said, and in hot spots, and then subduction zones. Andesite from the melting of the salt ocean crust, rhyolite from the melting of andesite ocean crust. And look at these fellas watching lava coming right down. Lava. So basalt eruptions are fairly safe. But don't do it. They, they blow. They are explosive. They have a champagne effect. They can kill you. Uh, here we're watching a huge eruption, and as the lava comes out, it's liquid, it's hot. It's so hot it's incandescent. You see it glow. Look at the orange color. And then it comes back down, and it starts turning into stone, and you get this downward pouring of rain, of volcanic cinder, we call it, and volcanic ash. Uh, we also see what looks like hair. Looks like hair. First time I saw this, I said, oh, look at all the hair on top of the, the lava. Somebody died. <laughs> but it's not hair at all. It just looks like hair. It looks more like cotton candy. What happens is that the lava goes up, and it gets blown by the winds, and it gets strung out into long fibers of glass. And it's called Pele, for the goddess Pele, hair. And he, look at the lava. Look at all the holes <coughs> bubbling out, making atmosphere. Breathe it in <coughs> with crystals of olivine, gem quality, we would call peridot. Really high temperature. So basalt lava, of all the lavas we have on this planet, is a really our highest temperature lava. It has the lowest silica. Our Earth's crust and mantle are mostly made out of silicon and oxygen and magnesium and iron. But they silicate, and silicon is the most abundant metal in our mantle and crust. Silicon causes, it's really a high, high charge metal, it's a four plus charge, it causes other atoms to cluster to it. So if you have a lot of silicon, it causes the lava to thicken up and get more dangerous. With low silica, it doesn't get as thick, it's more fluid. If you're making gravy and you want to thicken up the gravy, how do you thicken it? What do you add? Cornstarch. Yeah, absolutely. Or flour. And so silica is a lot like cornstarch. It thickens up the lava. Uh, with low silica, the salt lava actually flows like a stream. It follows uh, valleys and road beds, comes down the hillside. Look at this. Here we have a river of basalt lava flowing. Here are some islands cascading over a lava fall. So it has really low viscosity. Low viscosity, write it down, means more fluid because it has high temperature and low silica. You need to know this. Basalt lava is, has low viscosity or is more fluid because it's got high temperature and low silica. All right? Flows easily, rates of tens of miles per hour. Just love it. Look at this little book. Yeah, it's wild. Ooh, don't you want to go up to it, play with it? Yeah, come with me. Look at that. Lava flowing by. How do you do that in sound like? Crazy. Look at that. You see where it's coming down? It's really blowing. Higher yellow, it's really hot here, and then orange where it's cooler. And look at the Pele's hair. Look at that. See? Right there. Looks like somebody died here, mommy. No, no. That's Pele. Who's Pele? Goddess. <laughs> and this kind of ropey lava is called the Hoi Hoi. Hawaiian term. Look at that. Look at that. Flowing. Low viscosity because it's hot. He's sleeping. <laughs> hey, Brad. Flowing. Look at that. He says, I, I know the story. Look at all the bohoi hoi. Very ropey, fluid lava. Coming out. Now it's coming down and it's getting cooler, turning orange. It's starting to turn black. Okay. Uh, bathroom break? Yep. All right. That didn't take long. Blowing out there. Oh, wow. I just got this off of YouTube last night. Isn't that wild? It's working. Love this stuff. And so we look at basalt lava 
It's because it's very fluid. It's a lot like if you make pancakes, all right, you stir the pancake batter, you get those swirly lines in it, all right, that's the hoy hoy. <coughs> Nature's own black, paint it black, the Rolling Stone says, paint it black, you just saw it turn black, right? There we go, you were wondering, why is he playing that old music? Well, I'm actually very old, <laughs> I'm 149 years old, and uh, so here is the hoy hoy. If I show you one part of your midterm, it's multiple choice. Regular multiple choice, but another kind, another part, is multiple choice of slides. And I will put a picture like this. And this kind of lava is, and you'll have to choose what? Oh, 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 oh. Is this, you know, Dr. A's gift to you or what? Because you are here. All right. And then this is a chunkier type of lava. It is a lava flow. Looks very different. It's chunky. It's blocky. It's really hard to walk on. I've done it. And they, the Hawaiians call it ah ah. And I think because you're walking on it, you're going ah 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 yeah, you got it. There you go. Look, look, you see, it's still flowing toward here. It's got a tree. It's carrying with it. But it's inside, it's, it's chunky, kind of viscous, really viscous. So the lava gets cooler, or maybe it's more silica in it. It flows in a different way. Chunky flows uh, like chunky peanut butter. Now, here's a job for you. A lot of lava does not come out of volcanoes. It comes out of big cracks. And these are called fissure eruption. means crack. Here's the crack. If I could show you, I told you, how does lava get to the surface? How does it rise through rock? It's got low density, but how does it get through the rock? It's got to break its way. Break its way. Earthquakes break its way. So I don't have the sound here, but this the ground is shaking and rumbling and cracking, and you're trying to stand up. Here's a crack. Here's a squirt coming out. Woo woo woo. And, and here, two geologists got a job. Of, of, what a job? You want a job? They go sample the lava. They got to do that. And uh, he's kind of getting ready. And then the next picture, he's all by himself. Get on in there. You get in there. <laughs> woo. And so fissure eruptions are huge. They're coming out of large cracks. Uh, what causes them to blow out like this? What causes them, one, they've got low density, they're rising, but the final force is the expulsion of gases. It's like a rocket. Expulsion of the gases, pushing it out. Oh, here, here you come. Oh, well, all went well, I hope. Y'all, you're pretty quick. And, uh, and so coming out, look at all the fountaining. People taking pictures and documenting this. And it's blowing up, it's volcanic cinder going up as liquid, li liquid, and it's coming back down, raining down the earth. When you have fountaining, you create a unique basalt volcano made out of volcanic cinder. Volcanic cinder is that rain of particles of liquid <coughs> that turn into stone. There it is. It's called a cinder cone. You could run right up these. This is in uh, the Mojave Desert of California. Why? In just a few weeks, I'm taking a whole bunch of Boston University undergraduates out, and we're going to hike that volcano and get right up to the very edge, last erupted just a few hundred years ago. So right up that cinder cone, right up the angle repose. It's all made out of pyroclastic. Pyro means fire. Classic means broken particles. Pyroclastic uh, debris that came out of this eruption not too long ago. Here's one farming right now in Hawaii and in Maui. Here's one that's ancient. Look at that, it's erupting, pyroclastic, blowing straight up. This is not coming out of a fissure, but out of a volcano. So we have fissure eruptions with basalt making lava, and we have a volcanic eruption of lava, but now pyroclastic, pyro meaning fire, clastic, broken, bombs and cinder and volcanic ash. The <coughs> bombs are where they're really large, cinder when it's you know, smaller, and then ash when it's a little fine particulate matter, but all coming down, collecting falling down, collecting, and making a cinder cone. This is one offshore of Maui that's extinct. Maui is entirely extinct, and now is a safe harbor for boats. <laughs> and one year, a student says, hey, I've been there. Oh, wow, that's kind of crazy. And so this is what volcanic cinder looks like. That's what makes up a cinder cone. Here's Pele's hair. It's there as well. Not really hair at all. Uh, a different kind of volcano made not of pyroclastic cinder, but rather of just lava is called a shield volcano. Here is Mauna Kea. Goes up so high, it's all lava, all lava. Goes up so high, it's got snow at the top all year round. Uh, really up there high. 
And uh, here's Mauna Loa, another one on Hawaii. It's a shield volcano. And so these are good examples of slot identified type questions. I show you a volcano, and you say, ah, oh, that's a single cone, or that's a shield volcano. Because it's, it looks like a shield that you know a soldier would use. It's very broad, made out of lava, made out of the salt. A cinder cone is not large. A shield volcano is quite large. Cinder cones made out of pyroclastic cinder, and shield volcanoes made out of lava, but all of it was salt, painted black. All of it was salt. Okay? Look at Mauna Loa and the Southern Cross right there. We don't get to see that constellation. Uh, in the northern, <coughs> in, the, in this our area of the northern hemisphere, but here we're getting close enough to the equator, we can actually see some southern hemisphere constellations, so southern cross. All right. Uh, also, we get lava on basalt lava on land, and these make up so much lava we call it flood basalt. Uh, in the Cascade region, region of Idaho, Oregon, and, and, and Washington, two of these, the Columbia River basalts and the Snake River plain. Flooded, flooded the Northwest. Flood basalts are huge. They are non active today unless Yellowstone reawakens from its dormant state. But these have put out so much lava at times in Earth history, they have caused major extinctions. And in fact, the biggest extinction the Earth has ever had was at the Permian Triassic boundary, and it was created by flood basalts, we think. All right? And so there, there's a view of the Columbia River, the Snake River Plains, not active today unless dormant Yellowstone reawakens. But Siberia, Russia, 248 million years ago, and that was the biggest extinction. But also, when they got the KT boundary, and we think the asteroid that hit off the Yucatan Peninsula did it, it coincided with another huge outpouring of flood basalts uh, in, in India and other parts of, of the world. All right? And so this is what flood basalts look like. This is the Columbia River Gorge. Uh, look at all that basalt. This is in eastern Washington. Eastern Washington is a, in a desert, semi-arid desert, uh, behind the Cascade Ranges. The winds come from the, the west, and they lose all their water in the Cascade Ranges. So the eastern Washington is very dry. So not many trees out here. But look, that's, look at all that basalt. We go to Western Washington, west of the Cascades, where they catch all that rain, a lot of trees. And we still see the Columbia River basalts. And here, these remarkable columns. When this is one single cooling unit, look at all that lava, and when it cools, it contracts and makes these hexagonal shaped columns. These are called columnar joints. When it cracks, it, it makes these perfectly Six-sided arrays, these triple junction fractures coincided with six-sided shapes, making these remarkable columns all the way down. That's the side view. That's the surface view. Beautiful columnar joints. Let's go to Iceland. Iceland is on a mid-ocean ridge, but it's also a hot spot. Most mid-ocean ridges are underwater 5,000 feet down. Why is Iceland way up high above sea level? Well, it coincides. It's both a hot spot and a mid-ocean ridge. It's been active there for a long, long time. This was just Last April 16th, there is Iceland, there goes the Mid-Atlantic Ridge going right through it. And look at this eruption, clouds of volcanic ash going up. Volcanic ash is the smallest particulate matter, and it can actually float up like clouds being held by the hot gases of carbon dioxide and steam. Look at these eruptions. Whoa, look at all that stuff. Whoa, don't breathe that in. Look at that. Here's the volcanic ash driving through it. Your carburetor, your car sucking that in, gasping for breath. Look, look at all that. That is a huge. This is also pyroclastic. Pyro, fire, classic, broken. Not lava. It's broken. Finer than cinder. Much finer than a volcanic bomb. It's ash. Look at it come down like snow. Hard to breathe. Look at that. And it causes lightning. It causes two forms of lightning. You get lightning coming down from the clouds that are attracted to volcanoes, and you get lightning within. It's a different color. You get lightning within. You got particles going by each other, and they cause electrons to flow. Electrons to flow so charged, they make lightning. Look at that thundering away. So you get near a volcano that's erupting, you might find that your hair literally starts standing on end because of the electrons moving toward the Earth, working to leap out and go up into the ground. Look at all the lightning display. 
beautiful. Nature's own wonder. <laughs> Don't breathe. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> now let's go to another grand hot spot that is not on a mid-ocean ridge. Most of them are not. It's out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Let's go to Hawaii. And the only anti-volcanism -volcan on Hawaii is at the Big Island. The Big Island is on a hot spot. Everything else is dead. In fact, the hot spot is about right in here, just off edge. Mauna Loa and Mauna Kea are active, right in there. Kilauea is right in here. That's the active part. The northwest part of the Big Island is dead. All right? And so Hawaii ranges in age from zero, it's active, to uh, uh, 0.5 million years in age, 500 million years. Maui has been dead for a million years, 1.0. Molokai has been dead for 1.8. Oahu has been dead for 3.3. Never to become active again. All right? And Kauai, where Jurassic Park was filmed, has been dead for 4.6 million years. And so that's Hawaii. And then it continues underwater. We call these seamounts. And they can consequently get dead. Out here by Midway, that's above water. And it's been dead for 26 million years. And then there's a curious bend in the seamount changes. It's called the Emperor Seamount Change. Out here underwater, but we've sampled them. That bend is at 46 million years. Then you follow the thing, the, the seamounts go all the way to the Lucian Trench where they're being subducted. Whoa. <laughs> and so the Hawaiian hotspot has been active for at least 78 million years. It's the longest lived hotspot, along with Iceland, that the world has. It's off the mid ocean ridge. And what's happening, the hot spot is fixed. The hot spots, most of them, we think, come off, write this down, they come off the core mantle boundary. They don't even care about plate tectonics. You know, they come right up. <laughs> he found you. Oh, dear, I didn't get a sleep. I didn't get any sleep last night. <coughs> Why not, honey? And then one time I had somebody answer that question for me, and I never will ask that again. <laughs> <laughs> And so it, it comes right off the core mantle boundary. It doesn't even know about plate tectonics, but above that, above that plume, the, the plates are moving. The plates are moving. So it just keeps burning new holes, new holes in the plate. Okay? And that gives you the sequential age of whole hot spot chains like Hawaii and the Emperor Seamounts. So let's go to Hawaii. Beautiful waterfalls, black. Sand beaches derived from erosion of basalt. Sometimes you get green sand beaches from all the olivine. It's lovely. Uh, I took this picture. We're hiking in with a whole bunch of people. And look at all the pahoy hoy lava. And, and we're traveling with sticks. And the reason we're traveling with sticks is that one of the safety precautions. Because when lava flows, it flows so easily because of its low viscosity that it will flow out and leave a roof, a shell, over a tunnel, over a tunnel, which you can walk upon and fall in. So we're, we're walking and tapping in case the ground suddenly gets hollow. So here we see Bahoy Hoy racing up and gets an older uh, uh, flow. We like that. All right. And here's a good place to get staffs to carry. It flows out through a forest, flowing. Ah, there it is. That's the lava tunnel. All right. You fall through that, you're vaporized. You're, you then become steam and carbon dioxide. Yeah, no, no, not me. Watch this. Don't you like that? Look at it. We, we love YouTube. This is without sound. But look at it flow. And look at the Pele's hair making. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This one with sound. Pretty good, huh? Low viscosity. Oh, yeah. Why? Hot and low silica. All right. There we go. Watch this one. Ahoy, ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Don't you want to go out and kind of stick a stick in it? Yeah. Yeah. And here is a lava toe. There you go. Look at that. See? Lava toe. Go come in. Take a hold of a lava toe. There it is. All right. There it is. I grabbed it. Came from Idaho. That one. Here is Aha Lava. Still moving? Chunky? It's lava. But why is it thicker? It's got greater viscosity, not low viscosity, because it's cooler, maybe higher silica. Oh! Look out! Look at that! Great explosion! 
What's bubbling out there? Well, what's causing this? The gases, the gases, carbon dioxide, water. Look at them. Bubbling out. Get back, get back. That sport gets you. You're gone. Don't do what I do. Wow, just got that last night on YouTube. <laughs> Crazy. And now watch this. Do you want a job? These are volcanologists, the field of geology, and they're uh, inspecting this huge lava window. This is a circular area that goes down into a lava lake. I've been in one of these. Crazy. Don't fall in. Now I can wear these suits. Oh, we got some on his hands. Oh, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I'm gonna use ropes. Look at the churning lava inside. You melt the metal, you get the salt. Where it's really hot, the colors are very bright. The day I played around with the salt, I lost all the skin on my face. All right, just peeled away like from a sun lamp. But was it worth it? Oh yeah. We, we were so ill-prepared, we backpacked in with grocery plastic bags full of beer. I took some of my beer first and opened a can and poured it into the lava. All right? So, the beer and I, the lava and I drink beer together. Uh, kind of a religious statement. And so as I was walking around uh, in the hoy hoy, I, I found what I think is a lava shark. When you say, donna, 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 here, here. Yeah, and here, well, of course that's a shark. Look at that. <coughs> yeah. uh, crazy. It's all for hoy hoy. And what, what do you figure that is? Well, I think one of I think it's lava sex. One of them's eating the other. Right? I don't know what the gender of which one is, but uh, crazy. Look at that new lava. All right. So there I am with my grocery bag of beer cans and you know, got to stick into it. I'll stick it in there. Come on, come here. And now I'm pulling it out. And what was going on? I, I would stick the stick in, and the stick would burn off inside the lava. And then you get this gas jet. It was exploding inside the lava. So you get this gas jet uh, coming back at you. That was what was burning my skin off. And then I pull it out. Yeah, pull it out. And, and there, a brand new baby rock. Uh, new baby. Baby rock, now born, zero in age. Oh, there you are. Such a young child. Turning black, painted black, don't you see? Big Jagger had it right, painted black. And, and as we hiked, these new lavas had, had, had inundated a forest. And, and we found this one patch of forest that had not, that's it, all that was left. And in the middle, we heard this mooing. Moo! 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 And we, we got up to that, that island of woodland and we locked what was mooing at us, that was a very happy cow. <laughs> yeah, we were its saviors. It looked at us like, oh, you're my angels. You'll take me out of here, won't you? It's been quite horrible. I could attest to this. <laughs> and now, thank you to Google and Noah. Ten worst volcanoes. Mount St. Helens, top ten list. Look at that. Grew up in 1980. <coughs> Blew off one side of the mountaintop. Number nine, where are we going? Ecuador, Light Mount St. Helens, Subduction Zone, Subduction Zone, Thursday's topic. Where we go now? Number seven, number eight, Chile, Subduction Zone. We're on, look at that. Last approach in 2007. And where now? Here we go. Number seven, Vanuatu, an island arc. Out of the Pacific Ocean. Okay, the top ten list continues. And number six, Guatemala, Central America, subduction zone. Look at you, just waiting to come back again. In recent history, number five, let's go to the Mediterranean. Strong bowling, subduction, leading a continental collision. I'm colliding. And number four, the Congo of Africa. Look at 
okay. Let's go. And now, number two. Have a great day.